here, and I'm sitting down with Daniel Burns and Carrie Krim, playwright and actor of Conviction, our upcoming show at Rubicon. Daniel, what drew you to Conviction at Rubicon? The paycheck. There you go. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that and the, and the trip to California, of course. Um, I remember sitting down, reading Conviction for the first time, and I'm not just saying this because Carrie's sitting next to me, but I remember having to just sit back and, and just marinate, for lack of a better word, in, in these feelings that were coming up after reading it. It's just, it's not punctuated with a period at the end, and it's left with this, this you know, literary ellipses, and it, it asks all these questions of the audience and of every character in the show, questions that we, as you know, human beings, don't ever want to ask ourselves or ask our family members. Um, and what fun as an actor to be able to ask those questions every night or be asked those questions and to really go on that roller coaster with the audience to you know, really find things out with the audience, to uncover real truths and to uh, you know, really come to terms with the unspeakable. And I mean, as an actor, that is so thrilling and so exciting. Uh, but it is so grounded in reality that I think it's a story that needs to be told and a story that uh, really yearns to be told. And really, when I first sat down, it was like, the breath was just taken out of me and then it was, you know, wow, I, like, I want to do this. And ultimately, the desire, the need to do it and to work on the pieces what brought me here. Is there anything that surprised you in the development or response to conviction, and what challenges have you faced? Sure, go for it. Um, I've been really happy with the response in terms of people just really wanting to stick around and talk about it afterwards. I mean, to the point of, I've been heading to my car sometimes after talkbacks, and people will chase me out of the theater, and um, teachers will come up to me and tell me, and ask me if I was a teacher because they feel like it was something that they deal with so often um, and everybody at least the people that approach me seems to have, have a story that somehow relates to the to the play whether it's their story or someone that they know or you know it, it reminds them of that particular teacher that they had that they loved so much and so that's been really gratifying just that it seems to be touching people on such a uh, personal level um, Challenges, yes, I mean, there's, there, there always are. I think just trying to find the balance in the play, um, trying to find, it, there, there's a lot of just, it's, it's subtle, and sort of, so it's just trying to, to sharpen it as much as possible without losing what is important to me about the play. I mean, like what Carrie said, it has really, you know, hit a chord with so many people to the point where, um, you know, family members and, and people I, I've never met before, instead of coming up and talking about a performance or talking about the technical aspects of the show, they want to talk about story and that kernel of truth, and they really want to talk about things that happened to them or things that they have experienced or, or have been a part of, um, and it's really been a catalyst for discussion beyond just the theatricality of it, beyond the, the setting, it's, it is about the drive home. And we say that a lot, is people get into their car and that's the conversation. And that's what surprised me the most, is that it wasn't just something that I was experiencing, it was something that everyone was experiencing. People were talking about it days later and taking days to talk to me about it because they really wanted to, to come to terms with what they really thought happened or, or what they thought had actually gone on in the show before they came to a decision. And that was so surprising to me that it was really sitting with people long after they left the theater. Uh, and that's the best thing that you can hear, I think, as someone who works in the theater as an actor, especially as a writer, that people are really sitting with your piece for that long. Um, yeah. And I think, and this will probably speak to the challenges, one of the, the, the biggest challenges of, of the piece, I think, is to find, you know, there's, there's so much that happens to this family. And to, family, and I mean, in the greater sense, the, fr the friendships too, that to find all the ways to fight for the love that they have for each other, to fight for the positive things that, that they once had before all of this happened, um, is, is one of the, I think, fun challenges of, of the 
play is watching the actors sort of find that and navigate that. Um, and these guys are doing it really, really well. So. For sure, it's definitely fun. It's it's a challenge every day to walk in knowing that the subject matter is so heavy in a sense that you know the accusations being thrown are not light ones, uh, and to be able to walk in the room and experience that anew every day is such an incredible challenge. But what's exciting as an actor is you walk in and it's going to be different every day. It's going to hit you differently every day, but ultimately, you know, the truth is still there. And that's what's been so fun to navigate and so challenging also. And do you think the audience really does find resolution or is it really left up in the air? At some of the talkbacks we would have people raise their hands and it was like raise your hand if you think he did it and that would be some and then raise your hand if you think he didn't and that would be some and then raise your hand if you don't know and that, that really seemed to be the majority which I like because that's where the characters in the play are except for Tom. Nobody else knows if he did it or not. So I think, I think that that's a good place to be. But there were other times that people were, would come up to me, he did it, didn't he? I'm, I am so sure that he did it. And then uh, you know, other times, oh, I wish that you know, it could have been different because he just, of course he's innocent. And so it, it's, it, tends, it seems to be what people bring with them into the theater also seems to affect yeah. what they take out. So just different every night. Mm -hmm. you know, I can see it two nights in a row, or I can you know, obviously be in it two nights in a row, and it's different each night because what you bring to it as an audience member and how you observe you know, the things that are happening and whichever character you choose to see the show through is really going to change your perception and change your perception on his guilt or his innocence. Definitely. So what does this play really boil down to for you both? <laughs> um, for me, it's a, it's a, it's a play that isn't actually about did he or didn't he. It's a play about a family dealing with how to come to terms with um, a loss of trust and how to come to terms with putting the pieces back together once that has been, once you know they're going along, everything's fine this thing happens and now everything's different. And it's not just that everything is different, it's kind of like everything has been blown up. And how do they and can they put those pieces back together? Yeah, I mean, along those lines, I think it's a lot to do with trusting someone without ever knowing the truth about someone, if that makes any sense. It's, it's really about what trust means, um, what love means in very basic terms. And, and how you kind of can weed through all the accusations and all the outside stories and people's other, people, other people's perceptions and how you can really just look at someone and truly love them and truly trust them no matter what and being able to you know, witness that or be a part of that I think is really what the show is about. And what happens when moral boundaries that you thought were absolute suddenly don't seem so absolute? when black and white becomes much more gray. Yeah. Make sure to go see Conviction running September 3rd through 28th at Rubicon.